Let's do something fun today. What do you say? Let's make some backgrounds, book covers, collage pieces, abstract art, whatever you want to call it. Do with it as you will. It's just a piece of painted decorative paper for you to use in the same way that you would use any other decorative paper. So mine, I know I'm probably going to use at least one of them for a book cover for this loose leaf book, which is just a stack of Citrusolve National Geographic pages that I'm just going to bind in here just like that in a, you know, sort of loose leaf situation. I have videos for that. But these are perfect book covers for that. Or, you know, like I said, use them for whatever you want, but I just see them as book covers. These are a little more decorative. Got a little sparkly going on and a stencil. And then same with this. But the painted background part is, you know, basically the same in all of them. And it's very simple. And you don't need a lot of supplies. Here's the thing. Okay, let's say you don't have a lot of supplies. You want to do something like this, which is, you know, easy, it's versatile, and it's inexpensive because you can do this for around 30 U.S. dollars. This doesn't include shipping, but if you happen to buy these products from the uh, DecoArts website or at your local craft store, either way, it's going to cost you about $30. That's not much for a lot of impact because, you know, $30 is enough to do this over and over and over and over and over. But you don't have to spend a ton. You don't have to accumulate a whole bunch of supplies that take up a bunch of space. This is super simple. Here's what you need. I'm using a couple of pieces of drop paper. You can use scrap paper. This is like a kind of a decent, good, heavy weight um, computer paper. You can use cardstock. You can use whatever you want. It doesn't have to even be neat and clean. You can make it whatever size you want. Mine, my pages are going to be about 16, 11 and a half by 6, 12 by 16 ish. Doesn't matter, that's just the size they are. And actually, I'm probably going to cut it down even smaller from a, if I use it to cover this book because, you know, I've got a lot of excess that I don't need. Or I might just, okay, well, I'll do something. Anyway, <clears throat> size doesn't matter. Make it whatever size you want. All you're going to need to do this is a couple of containers of gesso, one black, one white. I'm using the um, DecoArt Media 4-ounce containers. You need one of each of those. You're going to need some paint. And I am using, you're going to need six colors, three regular colors and three neons. Choose the colors that you want. If you're unsure about color, you can't go wrong with some shade of red some shade of yellow, and some shade of blue. You know, stick with those. This time, I'm going to use a pink, a red, and an orange. And these two are the Crafters Acrylics from DecoArt. Y'all, you need to head over to the DecoArt online store. They have some of these on sale now. Normally, they're only like 89 cents. I mean, they're practically nothing anyway. They've got some on sale for, I think it was 38 cents. Yeah, I think 38 cents for a two ounce good craft paint. So, okay, don't miss out on that. But, you know, quantities are limited. It's that kind of thing. So, shh, just make sure you go and place your order before you tell all your friends. <laughs> so that way you'll get your stuff. <laughs> okay, so I've got the Crafters Acrylic and 2D Fruity and Pure Pumpkin. And this is a Deco Art Americana paint in True Red. So those are the three paints I'm going to use. The neons I'm using are the colors I happen to have. Doesn't really matter. Um, these are Americana neons in sizzling pink, thermal green, and scorching yellow. So I've got my um, two gessos, 
my three paints, my three neons, and then I like something a little sparkly. So I think I'm going to use one of the Craft Twinkle Riders from DecoArt. I have a silver and a gold. Um, to keep it under your $30, choose one. Silver or gold, let's just use, let's use gold. And you're going to need a stencil. Y'all, they have some stencils on sale too. There's some for like a dollar seventy-five for good, you know, like six by eight stencils. Yeah, good deal. But for this little guy, we are going to be using the DecoArt Andy Skinner Hippie Chic Stencil. And it comes with the mask. It's one of those, you know, where you can punch it out and then use this part of it too. I don't need that for this particular thing. I just need the stencil part. So, that is all you need. This is for not a lot of supplies, not a lot of money, and not a lot of effort, and you get fabulous results. So, here's what we do. You are going to start out by, uh, take your little sheet of paper here. And really, I recommend that you use a kind of large paintbrush in probably the worst condition you can find. <laughs> if you have one of those really pitiful, cheap one of these, that's, you know, just awful brush. It's perfect. Mine's been sitting in water for, I was going to say a few days, but that's a lie. <laughs> Pretty much indefinitely. Okay, take your white. DecoArt Media Gesso, stick the brush in, and then randomly dab. And you're going to need two sheets of paper to do this, but you're just going to work on one at a time. The other one is to smush together with this one. I'll show you. And if yours is white, it doesn't have, you know, any ink or blobs on it, that's fine. But if it does, if you have some drop paper you can use, this is a good time to use it up. Good way to use it. Okay, I'm going to wipe off the excess white gesso. Because now I want to use a little bit of the black DecoArt Media Gesso. And kind of do the same thing. Don't go overboard, and no need to, you know, blend it too much. You don't want to turn everything gray. You just want to have some really messy blobs of random gesso, along with some areas of naked paper that have no gesso on them at all. This is not a, let's prep our paper with gesso <laughs> type routine here. That's not what we're doing. <laughs> Okay, now we're gessoed. Now you want to take your three paint colors that you chose, your red, yellow, blue, or your orange, pink, and red, whatever, and you want to dry this real quick before I get too far ahead of myself. And this is also where that second sheet comes in. This will help your page to dry faster if you kind of... Press down all of the uh, excess wet stuff onto here, and then it helps this one to dry faster. So, you want the black to be pretty much dry. Doesn't have to be perfect. You just don't want it running all over the place. Then you want to take your three paints, and you want to put them on here in some way. Okay, don't overthink. Open your thing, squeeze out a line, squeeze out a circle, squeeze out an arc. You're done. Okay? Take another one. Do, ooh. Oh, is that wet? No, let's dry. Do a squiggle, do a blob, do another line. Oh, I want something up here. Take your third one. Do uh, another squiggle. Do a triangle, just because it's stupid. Do this. 
do that and that. <laughs> okay, you are basically just putting the color on there in some weird random way that you're not thinking about too much, okay? Then you want to take your sad little brush, or your sad big brush, and if you have a, you know, if you're using red, yellow, and blue, start with the yellow. Start with the lightest color first. Work to the darkest. If they're kind of the same value, then just don't worry about it. But you want to just kind of do this. Just kind of gently brush and blend. And this is why you kind of need to use three colors that play nice together because you are going to have some uh, mixing of colors going on. And that's okay. You just want circles and lines and weirdness and stuff that makes no sense whatsoever. Got excess paint on my brush. So I put it in my excess paint book. No, I don't freak out that that page is going to stick to the one next to it. I'm going to yank it apart. It's going to rip and it's going to be fabulous. If you've seen some of my other books like this that I've done, they are ripped and wonderful. They're ripped. They are ripped and wonderful. <laughs> okay. Now, it's got a lot of paint on it, so I'm going to let it give this one a kiss. This way we can share some of the paint between the two. And see, you get fabulousness. Boy, I might do that again. That was fun. And I've still got a lot of paint on there. So I am. I'm going to do it again. My paper get good contact. And peel them up. Uh-huh. See, to me, this is already just beyond fabulous. Just beyond fabulous. I think that's good. Now, now I'm going to take my neon colors. I'm just going to dot them on in some of the naked spots. Just put little dots here and there. And one there, and one there. Then take your big nasty brush again and just kind of, you know, do this. <laughs> I don't know what this is called. Do whatever this is called that I'm doing. You're just smushing it, dabbing it, stippling it, uh, whatever. And I, yeah, I'm kind of dipping into all three colors, which is fine. If you see they start to get muddy, stop and wipe off your brush. I think they're good. Now, this is some kind of a quilting ruler or something. It's Good for a uh, squishing. <laughs> we got a little stickage. Did you see the stickage right there? Yeah, that's all right. Like I said, that's just texture. Oh my gosh, that is gorgeous. As is that. Okay, now I'm just gonna. 
I don't want to take the time to wait for these to dry completely, so I'm going to help them as long as much as I can. Now, if you'd like to, you can add some details with your glitter uh, craft twinkles writer or your stencils or both. I'm going to do both. I'm going to use this stencil and let's use the gesso. We don't need a whole nother color, different supply. We've got the supplies we need. And I think I'm going to put these girls in black. And these are my little brushes. I think I've showed these before. Uh, I keep them in here, according to Roy G. Biv. And they're just these little uh, Judicans color dusters. And then I had these little pieces of foam that were inserts in these little acrylic jars that I use. <laughs> I just glued them on there. And the rubber bands are for when I wash them. I wrap the rubber band around here so that as they dry they um, stay together instead of getting all splayed out. So that's what that's all about. I, I know that's a weird little OCD thing of mine. But they work fabulously. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take some black gesso. You can apply it with a regular brush, a stipple brush, a makeup sponge, or any other kind of spongy something, you know, whatever. I'm going to put this girl right here and just kind of just so inside the stencil. And there she is. And there we have it. Now, I like to do the stars too. Let's do some of those in, in the with the white gesso. So, get my white gesso, get my, my W, my white little spongy deal. And let's do some stars. Make some blobs and you know that whole routine. Okay, I think that is probably good right there. Now, now we want to really let these dry because then the last thing we'll do is go around it with some of the glitter rider. It's not right. Twinkles rider, and we don't want to make a mess. So. Let this dry, and well, we could we could do this one while that's drying. Okay, this one is not. Let's go. Let's go off the grid here. This is outside your thirty dollar purchase. If you choose to spend thirty five dollars, <laughs> you can pick up another stencil. Let me grab it. Okay. And there we have that one. All right, I'm gonna let these dry, and then we will come back and see what happens next. So here we are, ready to finish our pretty pages. I'm just gonna take my gold craft twinkles writer from Decoart, and <coughs> just outline the stuff that I stenciled. Don't have to outline it well. Just get it on there. See? And can 
do the stars too. While I'm waiting for my other pages to dry, I'm going to go ahead and assemble this little book since it's on my mind. This is one of the pages I did the other day. I cut it down to better fit my little insert book block thing there. Now I'm just going to, I've marked a little mark about every inch and I'm going to drill a hole. I missed one. Uh, there. <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> anyway, nothing fancy, just to... I'm just going to wrap some cord around the glued spine here, just as kind of a extra double you know, double check thing. just going to use something this is not going to show because I don't want to I want this over the binding I don't I don't I want that as like a cover you know I don't want it stitched through the thing so I'm just going to get some I'm going to use this this is some uh, hemp that looks like baker's twine but it's hemp so it is super strong and I'm just going to do my usual thing I do. And I'm going to pull off about one, two and a half lengths. Just so I know and then just start sewing. Start on one end. It doesn't matter how you start. Just go. You go around like this. Wrap it around the edge. This is the way I like to do these loose leaf bindings. Leave a little bit of a tail. And then you want to turn around and go back the other way. So cross over. See it makes a little, little X there on the spine. And then you go in here. Pull tight as you go. And just keep going just like you did. Okay. Now that just kind of helps to ensure everything stays bound in there like it's supposed to be. I can tie this off. I'm going to use some Crafter's Pick Ultimate Glue. This is similar to Aline's Tacky Glue. Now, I'll let that dry and then I've just got a fun little um, book to use, make into a junk journal or a regular journal or an art journal or a book for no reason or no. Oh. Well, it happens. <laughs> That's going to be a tip in. <laughs> yeah, I meant to do that. I left a couple of tip ins. Yeah, you can do that in your book too. <laughs> okay, there we go. 
Um, let's check our covers, see if they're dry. Now, after your sheets dry, you are ready to do with them as you please. So now this one is ready to be um, cut into different elements. You can use these on your journal pages or greeting cards or um, mixed media canvases or whatever. You can make it into a book cover which I think is a perfect magazine style book. This is the second one I did with the different stencil and I took the gold twinkle writer and just wrote words with it. Not sure if you can even see them but usually, sometimes I'll do song lyrics or just whatever's in my head, and I write it really weird and messy in a way that you really can't read. Sometimes you can pick out a word here and there, but I overlap the letters and stuff so that it's not really legible, but it does <clears throat> look like script rather than scribbling. Anyway, there we have them, and this one is the one that I bound. And it is all, you know, ready to be, do something awesome with it. So, that is all for today and for this idea. Hope you give it a try. That's all I've got. The end. Oh, that's what this should be. These are papers that are kissing. This one's really squishy. We got a lot of tongue going on here. <laughs> Don't say that, Sam. Edit, edit. <laughs>